It started with an idea to bring together a group of nerds so they could finally pay attention during a session of D&D because they never could. But seriously, it was becoming a bit of a problem. My name is Matthew Yates, and if you're anything like me, you've likely encountered this same exact scenario while you've been playing D&D. With my group at home, this was becoming a bigger and bigger issue every time we'd play, so we started brainstorming some ways to really counteract this problem. The main issue that we identified was that we had lost a really nice playing surface. My brother had moved into a new house and we no longer had this very large table that was really nice to play D&D. So if we could just find a new table to play D&D on, that could keep us more alert while we're in the game. The only problem was they're getting really expensive. So with that rate, we might as well make our own, right? So with that, I got to work. Instead of a traditional table shape, I wanted to create the most advantageous layout for all of our players to have room while seated. Six player spaces and one really large side for the dungeon master. I actually found this design by user Joe John Hamilton on Reddit that fit my vision and ultimately led to the seven sided design that we ended up agreeing on. The link to that post is in the description. So with the design done, I listed all of the necessities that I would want for my player space during a game of D&D. Then I began drafting full designs. Using advanced geometry, a large ruler, and let's be honest, a lot of guessing, I was able to determine the correct length and width that I wanted for each of the player spaces at the table. Our digital maps have primarily come from the DM skill, but if you know of any other places where people can get free battle maps for D&D, put those in the comments below. Definitely check out the DM skill though, because they have a ton of different resources that can work for any D&D group. At this point, I had no idea how big the table was gonna end up being. So I did a ton of math and most of it ended up being wrong. So we just ended up laying it out on the floor and used a measuring tape and some non-measuring tape. We knew that within a slight margin of error that the table wasn't gonna be longer than six and a half feet in any direction. So that was gonna be a perfect fit for the room it was going in. And with that, we went to work buying and cutting the wood for the table. We made our initial cuts with an incredibly old table saw. Like seriously, this thing goes back to the 60s. But it was perfect for the small angled cuts that we made first. Michael and Nate were a huge help during this entire process, as well as my dad, who helped us cut each board into their respective playing station. After our initial cuts were done, we shaved off an eighth of the inch off the side so that way the boards would fit together really nice. So then we decided to test the cuts laying them out on the floor, making sure that our cuts were perfect enough. So once everything was in the right spot, it was time to put them together permanently. We used wood glue on each side to adhere the pieces and then hammered in steel mending plates to help strengthen the bond between them. To push that even further, we cut down small planks to size and screwed them in over the edges. This gave us a strong enough foundation to start routing out the dice trays. There, we were able to complete a rough sanding of the entire section before moving on to our next stage of the project. Our next point of order was to assemble the middle of the table, starting with the privacy guards. We used wood glue where necessary and then screwed them into the side of the completed section of the table. So then we moved on to the middle section, where the TV would sit. We used thicker 2x12 boards to fit that middle piece because we knew that it needed to be sturdy enough to hold up that TV. Now, by this point in the construction, we were well aware of some of the mistakes we had made, especially when cutting and fitting things together. The apex of the table didn't quite meet in the middle all the way, so we had to apply a shim to that portion and glued it over with wood glue and a sawdust paste. This process seemed to hold up over time, so I continued this method on other problem areas that continued to show themselves. We had plenty of sawdust from the previous cuts we had made, so there wasn't much loss overall. Once the blemishes were corrected, we were finally done with the middle of the table, which finished the first third of the project. So, now what? Yeah, that's, the, that's the real question. It was, it was a long, it was long. It took a long time. <laughs> 
before we could put on the DM section of the table, it needed some minor adjustments. The bottom of the table wasn't exactly level, however it was still in good enough shape to continue with the DM board. I kept filling in the gaps with sawdust paste, we screwed the DM section into the rest of the table, and by divine intervention, the playing surface was pretty much level. More gap filling, even more gap filling, and then we leveled out the DM board to fit alongside the rest of the playing surface. From here, we leveled out the bottom, added braces along the edges, and applied the 2x4 extensions along the outside edges of the DM board. Again, using the wood glue and screws to keep them in place. Then we grinded down all of our pointed edges for safety purposes, and the table's playing surface was entirely complete. I'd also like to note that while attaching the DM's board, we intentionally left a two inch gap in the middle so that wires and cords could be filtered through the bottom of the table. This ended up working really well, so that's a win for cable management. Now that the DM board was attached, we could continue leveling out this section of the table before assembling the larger privacy guards for the DM section using the official DM screen from the Wizards of the Coast as a guideline. The DM screen needed to shield their side of the table from the rest of the players, so we created fins that angled out from the privacy guard to help out. They turned out alright, but I decided to round out the edge with wood filler but I mixed in too much hardener at first and the whole thing crumbled up on me. So if you go this route, it's really easy to overdo it on the hardener. Second time's a charm though, and the rounded seams turned out great. I used the filler on other spots of the table and after it dried, we could once again sand down the rougher edges of the table to smooth them all out. Now, if I could do it again, I probably wouldn't use the wood filler at all. The wood filler was great on larger sections of the table, but it left a residue whenever I put it into a smaller gouge or nick on the surface. To remove the residue, we wiped a lacquer thinner onto the table. The next stage in the project was creating the lid for the middle section which housed the television. This was by far the most frustrating part of this entire process. We couldn't find an accurate enough way to go about it, so we did our best to trace the angles onto a sheet of plywood. Then we cut and ground down the board until it fit well enough into the middle section. We used four separate pieces for the lid, fixed them together with wood glue and some custom made brackets, and thank God because the lid was finally done. By this point, the legs we had ordered had arrived and they looked magnificent and certainly capable of bearing the weight of the table, which was quickly approaching 100 pounds. So I got to work staining the legs and the lid of the table and then we moved on to the bottom of the table itself. We prepped a few more areas on top of the table and added in supports to hold the lid in place and then stained the playing surface. Once the stain was dry, we could move on to mounting the legs to the table using square blocks to keep the top of the legs level with each other. We needed the legs to be removable for transportation, so we ordered some mounting plates from eBay and they ended up being a lot smaller than we expected, so we elected to make our own mounting plates from scratch. We used sheet metal and then attached a nut to the top of the plate so that way our mounting screws could screw right into those plates. Everything seemed to be in order, and then I noticed that one of the legs was slightly crooked. Fortunately, this ended up being an easy fix. We unscrewed the mounting plate and inserted some small metal shims in order to level the whole thing out. So finally, the construction was more or less finished. We applied our wipe-on polyurethane clear coat a total of three separate times. Our environment wasn't exactly dust free, so we needed to take some care after the polyurethane was dry. Now, wet sanding is typically something done with car paint jobs, but it's a fantastic way to remove any dust or debris from whatever project you're working on. So by the end, everything was smooth and ready to go. The final additions to the table were the neoprene pads that went into the dice tray and to the bottom of the legs. This is so we could avoid scratching all the wood flooring in the room the table was going in. Then came the reading lamps, which we just bought from Amazon. These were attached to the privacy guards using their own prepackaged mounts. We also drilled holes above the light mounts, so that way the cords could be fit through the middle of the table for a seamless installation. Now, we started this project back in March of 2020, and I know what you're thinking. 
it's been a while. I started working on this video at the same time, but I really started dragging my feet because we had switched gears and started working on a music video. Check that out up there if you haven't. And I just never got back around to finishing this. We've been focusing on trying to find work through the pandemic, but if I'm being honest, I really like to make this channel my main job. So if you've enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments and tell me what your dream D&D table would look like. YouTube runs on likes and subscribers, so we'd really appreciate your support with both of those. Now, in no way are we even close to professional carpenters, and honestly, we were really lucky to be able to use my dad's workshop. Without those tools, it would have been absolutely impossible for us to complete this build. What's important, though, is that the total cost of the lumber, the stain, and the clear coat totaled up to just under $300, and that's including the legs. We were about to spend twice that on a table, but then we came away with something even better that fits perfectly for our D&D group. All right, so here's the first look at our fully customized tabletop gaming table. The table ended up looking even better than I imagined, but what's even greater than that is it's really bolstered the attention span of our heroes. I'm already thinking about ways to improve this design, and I'd really like to make a second table, maybe with phone chargers or speakers. I'd love to hear any thoughts that you guys might have in the comments below, and if you really enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit that like button. Thank you guys for watching. I can't wait to see you guys again in the next one.